Hey guys, welcome. Chris here with Call to Wander, and today I want to cover a very important topic when it comes to planning your full-time RV life, and that is your budget on the road. Lindsay and I are meticulous about tracking our expenses, and we found that over the past two years we've averaged less than $2,000 per month with a little asterisk for fuel. Right now in 2022, fuel is a hot topic when it comes to budgets because fuel is incredibly expensive and I'll talk about fuel and how we manage our fuel expenses a little bit later in the video. But for all of our other living expenses on the road, we live on less than $2,000 a month. If you're interested in seeing where we've traveled with this budget, you can go back and check out our other videos, subscribe to our channel, and see all the places that we've gone, how we've lived, and we've lived a really good life for $2,000 a month. And for more details on exactly how we spend our money, you can go to the two links in the description below. One is going to be to our website post that outlines exactly what our expenses are in general. And then we also link to a Google sheet where we track our expenses on every single day. As we spend money, we enter them in there. So you're welcome to go in there and take a look at it, see what we're spending our money on um, as we track our expenses to stay under $2,000 a month. Now, as I get started, a very important part for us, and one thing I would say would be the absolute foundation of any plans to be a full-time RVer, is to be debt-free. There's a lot of theories and philosophies out there about how to be debt-free or whether there's good debt or bad debt, but essentially, we are debt-free. We owe nobody anything. Zero credit cards, no student loans, no medical expenses. We don't even have an RV payment. We paid cash for our RV. We remodeled our RV with cash that we earned so that we didn't go into debt remodeling the RV. We have zero debt. It's really important for two reasons. One, it takes away one of the expenses that you would have on the road otherwise in making debt payments. And two, it gives you another sense of freedom as you're traveling to beautiful places like this. I also want to point out that as you're budgeting, you want to budget fairly. So for us, $2,000 is a fair amount. In the perfect world, we would all budget more money for all the wonderful things that we could do, for driving around constantly, for staying in the best places, for doing amazing, incredible things, and for eating awesome food everywhere we go. But realistically, you have to look at your budget and you have to look at your lifestyle and decide how do you want to live. For Lindsay and I, $2,000 a month is a perfect budget for us because it's a balance between what we're able to make as well as the comforts that we have on the road when we're spending money. For you, $2,000 may be a little or it may be a lot. We've met a lot of people that live under $2,000 and quite a few people that live well over $2,000. And we've been surprised at how many people we've met that don't even track their budget at all. But the idea is that you want to budget fairly. You don't want to budget so tight that when something happens, it completely breaks your budget. But you also don't want to budget so loose that you're finding yourself at the end of the month saying, oh, I've got $500 left over. I'm going to go blow it on X, Y, and Z. So when it comes to budgeting, in our particular case, it's all about the mindset. We look at money as a tool. We don't look at money as the ends. We look at it as a means to achieve the things that we would like to do in life. And for us, obviously, and many other RVers, life is about collecting experiences. It's about relationships with people that we meet along the way as we're traveling. And it's about the things that we do, the moments that we have, where we wake up, where we fall asleep, all the excitement that comes in traveling, that for us is worth every dollar of this $2,000 budget. Again, for you, your expenses may vary, your desires may vary, your idea of what full-time living on the road is may be different from ours. You may wanna go and bounce around and travel between friends or family where you might have a place to stay longer term, or you might like to be nomadic and go to a, a different place every single night. However you like to travel, take that into mind as you're figuring out your fair budget. You want to be fair to yourself. Now I want to talk about how we look at budgets and give you some tips on setting up your own budget. So we divide our budget into two parts. The first part is what we call our fixed expenses. These are expenses that we have whether we're on the road or whether we would be in a brick and mortar home somewhere with a normal life, nine to five, etc. Those expenses include things like our cell phone bill, our data bill, it includes our medical insurance, life insurance, medical expenses, things that we set aside for supplements and co-pays. Um, it also includes our entertainment expenses. Yes, you're allowed to treat yourself to Spotify, to Netflix, to Hulu. So we have Spotify and Netflix uh, included in our fixed expenses as well. Now you may have other fixed expenses. Again, we look at those whether you're stationary or not. So if you have a storage unit, if you didn't air quote sell everything and move into an RV because you actually have a storage unit somewhere, that storage unit is a fixed expense. You know you're going to have that expense regardless of where you are. It does not change. 
when you're on the road. That leads into the second topic of how we divide our expenses, and those are our variable expenses or our on the road expenses. For these expenses, you're looking at things that you actually have control over. So in this category, we have camping expenses, we have uh, grocery expenses, we have meals out. We like to separate those, so we have meals out expenses. Uh, and you also have your fun, your miscellaneous, your um, things that happen that you need to have some money to cover. For instance, you may have to or you will have to refill your propane tanks if you have propane. Um, there's times you may have to pay for water. Uh, there's all kinds of little things that may come up and you want to prepare for those expenses because those are what we call road expenses. In other words, if you weren't on the road, you wouldn't have those expenses. You'd have other things like a mortgage and utility payments and all that. So with these two types of expenses, the fixed expenses and the traveling expenses, I'm going to break down how we look at those in our particular situation. So for our fixed expenses, we budget $800. $800 a month covers all of our expenses, as I just mentioned. It covers our medical expenses, the supplements that Lindsay takes to treat her Crohn's disease. Uh, it includes our co-pays, our anticipated co-pays for doctor's visits and so forth. We set that money aside each month if we don't use it, and we let it uh, roll into the next month because sometimes we'll have higher expenses, other times we won't. It also includes our cell phone plan. We're on a family share plan, a great deal for us. We get $55 covers our phone bill with our, our phone payments. So it's a fantastic deal for us. It also covers our data um, while we're on the road. So we have some form of data because obviously we're uploading videos. We also are managing our websites and we're doing consulting that all requires data. We also budget for our fixed expenses, our dog food and their health, health expenses out of our fixed budget. Again, if we were living in an apartment in any town in the USA, we would have to feed our dogs and we'd have to take them to the vet and we'd have to treat them with heartworm and flea and tick medicine. So we budget that into our fixed expenses as well. And then of course, entertainment with our Spotify and our Netflix so that we have that digital entertainment as well. Your fixed expenses again are going to vary depending upon your life circumstances. For example, if you are experimenting with full-time living, maybe you still have a mortgage payment. Maybe you're renting out your house, you're doing an Airbnb while you're on the road. Maybe you're not, maybe you're, you're, you've are you're already paid off your house, so you have that one tax payment, taxes, insurance every year on that. Uh, again, maybe you have a storage unit that you have to pay for. Maybe you do have debt, and this is where you would lump your debt payments. If you're not debt-free, you'd lump them into your fixed expenses because your debt payments are probably fixed expenses. So all of these expenses may be different for you. You also may have additional medical expenses. If you're retired, you may have uh, Medicare supplements that you pay, or you may have separate dental insurance. All the different things that you may have that are the same regardless of where you are, we would consider those fixed expenses. So we lump those together. In our case, we live very, very modestly. So we have, eight th or we have $800 that we've budgeted for that. Now onto our variable expenses. We basically broke down our budget to be $40 per day. And when we first hit the road, we were driving from Florida to Alaska. We had zero idea what the expenses would be. We were just pulling money out. We had an idea based on some other travel websites that we were following, RV websites. Um, but we had no idea exactly what those expenses would be. So generically, we set aside $25 a day for camping, $25 a day for meals, and then we had $15 a day for incidentals. The first night on the road, I remember we got to a place and we, we camped in a state park and we paid $24.50. Lindsay and I high-fived each other. We said, hey, we're under budget. And then we went out to eat the next day because we met, met up with friends and we spent $40 on food and we're like, whoa, that was over our 25. So that immediately started us thinking, maybe we need to be more generous with how we budget each particular line item within our daily expense. So we've decided $40 a day is a good budget. And when you go and you visit our online budget, you'll see we break apart these categories per day and our goal is to come in under $40. So some days we won't have any grocery expenses because we don't go grocery shopping every day. So we didn't feel like we needed to set aside $10 a day for groceries. We just include that one day that we go grocery shopping, we might spend $100, but for the next five days, we don't go grocery shopping. Same thing with meals out. We don't eat out usually more than once, maybe twice in a week. And so we just group that into our whole uh, daily expense. One day we might go out to eat and spend $25 on a meal. The next three days we don't go out at all. So for us, $40 a day covers our groceries, 
our meals going out, covers our entertainment. If we get to a place like where we're camping right now, we had to pay for an Arizona uh, state parks pass or public land pass. Excuse me, that was $21. And so we take that out of our camping expense, which is lumped into our $40 a day. So in this particular case, we paid $21 on day one, but now we've been in this beautiful campground or campsite for four days and we've camped for free. So essentially that's $5 a day if we look at it that way. But we don't look at it that way. We look at it as $40 per day for 30 days in the month for $1,200 total. Fuel is a very difficult topic to budget because there are so many variables. We've learned that we get seven miles per gallon in our RV. It's a gas guzzler, we know that. Our truck camper wasn't much better, but we got between 11 and 12 gallon miles per gallon with that. Then of course there's the variables for fuel costs. You have no control over that. Without getting political, fuel is ridiculously expensive right now. We just filled up our tank, $200, at $4.57 a gallon, put in over 40 gallons. It was incredible, it was, it was just, it was mind blowing to do that. So you have no control over the fuel cost as well. The one thing you do have control over is how far you travel and how long you stay in a particular period of time. So that's really encouraging if you like to travel like we do, we've learned to travel slower and to stay longer. So in a lot of times we'll go to a place and we might stay for a week or longer. And we also won't travel that far between places unless we're trying to get from point A to point B. So for instance, when you go and you look at our September budget, you'll see we spent almost $1,000 in fuel in September. That's because we were leaving Florida and going to Wyoming all in the month of September. We don't usually travel like that, but we were eager to get back on the road after remodeling our RV, and we were picking up where we left off over in the West Coast and enjoying then traveling slowly. When we got to Baja, Mexico, we had two months where we didn't spend any money at all on fuel because we stayed in two small towns in Mulaje and one just outside of La Paz. And we stayed there each for over a month where we didn't have to drive around, all right? So fuel is dependent upon how your lifestyle is on the road. And that's why we separate that from our $2,000. Again, typically we're able to absorb most of our fuel expense into the $2,000 a month. So I don't wanna to be totally deceptive and say, all of our expenses are wrapped up under 2,000. But typically, if we were to average it out on a year basis, a 12 month basis, we might spend a total of $2,200 a month, where $200 is our overage for fuel, but everything else falls underneath that. And now that you have an idea about the general idea of our budgeting and how we spend under $2,000 a month, I'm gonna go ahead and take you into the actual spreadsheet and our website post where you can see more. And again, I'll just give you an overview so you can dive in deeper if you're interested. We have included comments everywhere, so when we say that we spent $42 on groceries, we might say we spent $17 at Walmart and $25 at uh, Piggly Wiggly or whatever. So there's lots of comments in there because we want to, again, be as specific as possible without giving you every line item for what is on our, our uh, receipt when we go grocery shopping. So you can take a look and see, oh, $12 for propane, um, $17 for the oil, $25 for a birthday dinner or whatever. So you'll get to see that broken down. Okay, so if you click on the link in the description that takes you to our website post, it's full-time RV living cost, you'll come to this post. And what you'll see is this handsome guy here with the beard and this big wad of cash. And as you scroll down, you'll get into the nuts and bolts of what I have been talking about. So you can see with the table of contents, how we break down the fixed costs, the variable costs, uh, the different contingencies, and so forth. So as you scroll through, you'll be able to see a more detailed breakdown, some of the um, RV memberships that I talked about that we recommend, some tips about dry camping and free camping, and there's the old Wally World that you can go to. This table right here is super important if you want to keep up with exactly what's going on. You can go back to our September budget, you click on that, and it's going to pull up a post that we put together on our September expenses. So you can click in here and you can see all the information about September. Saw us back on the road for the first time in a while. So after we remodeled, we drove all the way to Colorado. You can see and all that. We talk about the fuel and how much we had set aside some money for fuel. And then we get into the actual expenses. So here you can see camping. We spent $104.58 that month. That was $3.49 per day. Groceries, meals out, and so forth. We break down each category in more detail so you can see where we spent 
The money was mostly spent driving from Georgia to Colorado for fuel and then other expenses as well. Some tips that we had, we did quite a bit of camping using Passport America, so we definitely recommend that membership for you, um, as well as our Harvest Host. We spent some time there, um, groceries, meals out, other expenses, and so forth. So if you go back to the overview post, you can see each month that we've been on the road has a post like that. You scroll down and you'll see in this Google Sheet, and so I'm going to click on that and it's going to pop up our monthly budget sheet. And so it brings you to our tracking of our expenses. We have tracked our expenses since, since September. You can click on and see each of these um, different expenses, and then you can go in month by month. So I told you September of 2020, oops, sorry, September 2021, we started tracking our expenses. In this sheet, you can see where we were on September 1st, we were in Ackworth, Georgia. We were camping for free because we were staying with Lindsay's family. We spent $24.89 on meals, $48.82 on additional. I didn't put a note on there, but you'll see I've got notes that I've put in different places. So we started to move. Little Rock was free. We boondocked in the National Forest. Then we went on to Texas, and we boondocked in the city park in Dumas, Texas. Great Sand Dunes. We boondocked at Sacred White Shell BLM Campground. So we're pretty specific with all of that. We also get into Walmart groceries was $49.95. Additional down here, we bought a pressure regulator and a 10-gallon uh, water refill. So that was $21.50 for us. Um, and then, again, you can just keep on going through. That's September. You can look at our October expenses. November was interesting because we went to Baja in November the start of our almost five months there. And so you can see we were in Arizona. We stayed with friends for quite a bit of time, getting ready to go to uh, Baja. Here we started out in Mulahe, where we had $15 a night for camping, $25 we spent on Thanksgiving tacos and margaritas. That is our Baja Thanksgiving tradition. We'll spend that every single year if we can get back to Baja on those dams. So you can see all that. You can also scroll down. And I put our fixed expenses of $800. That's pretty much flat. As I mentioned, our fixed expenses don't really change. That's why I call them fixed. Then our travel expenses was $1,200 budgeted, but we only spent $1,154.80. So that put our monthly budget under. Here is the fuel expense, which I've talked about and we'll talk about again. We had a lot of fuel that we spent um, in November because we were driving from Arizona all the way down to uh, Mulahe, which is almost halfway down the Baja Peninsula. Um, so total, we spent twenty-eight seventy-eight. We did have some money set aside for fuel from savings that we had built up. So um, this is just again an idea, and I did mention that fuel is a disclaimer. Depends on how much you travel and how f um, how far you travel and how long you stay. Because once we get into November, December, I'm just going to scroll down to our fuel. We spent one hundred and forty dollars on fuel in December. That's because we didn't travel anywhere. So if you look at those expenses, 800 fixed, we spent under $1,200 for our travel expenses. We did have 140 for fuel, so that put us just over 2,000, but we're gonna save that in a later month. We came to January, and by the way, I'll do a video on our Baja budget for those of you who have wanted to travel to Baja and don't know how much it costs. These are in pesos, they're 20 pesos to the dollar. So rather than you having to do the math, you just scroll down and you'll see I've broken it down into dollars uh, in the second half. And so you can see we spent quite a bit in fuel that month. We were a little bit over, but our travel expenses were much less or $101 less than what we had budgeted for the month. Going into February, again, you can see all the different expenses. A little bit of fuel expense there and then March, very little. Even with our fuel, we came in under, and so some of this under here would be applied to, for what we went over. Um, and now we're in the month of April, and so our Baja budget faded. It says see below, and so you can pick up and see where we are here. It is April 14th. We are camping just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. We are free camping because we spent $21.45 to get our Arizona um, public lands pass. So we've been free camping the last couple nights. We haven't had to buy groceries because we're free camping, and so you can see all of that here. 
Another feature that we keep is a running total. So I call it our over under. So each day it tells us if we were over or under. So on a day that we only spent $25, excuse me, on April 1st, we were under by $15. The next day we only spent $10, we were under by 30. So our running balance shows us how much we've, we're adding or taking away from our budget. So $40 a day, if this is positive, that's great. All the way down to here, we were doing great until we got back to the United States. And then we had some expenses. We got to go to our Aldi, got excited about Aldi. We went to a Walmart that had everything we wanted from a grocery standpoint. We also had a really cool experience where we donated a tire to a stranded lady on the side of the road. That's a long story I've got to learn to share somehow. Um, but that's not a normal expense we'd have. That set us back. So you can start to see our running balance gets into the negative. But that's where our free camping starts to catch us up a little bit. So we're recouping some of this money. And the idea is at the end of the month, we want this number running balance to be positive. Um, and that is our goal. We kind of make it a game when we budget. So as we get toward the end of the month, if we're like maybe we're $60 over budget on, on this particular day with four days left, we might say, well, we can save $40 a day by not spending money any, on anything. Let's go camp in BLM land. Let's pick a beautiful spot and let's go sit out there for three or four or five days and save money that way. Um, so that's just another tip and trick that you can apply. So this is our website. We'll continue, or this is found through our website. You can get there from any of the posts that we've shared in the description below um, about our particular budgets or any of our monthly expenses broken down. If you want to know why we spent more money on one thing or on another, we get very detailed in our month-by-month -month breakdown. We'll be continuing this into the future for as long as we are traveling. Um, even in times where we may be stationary, like this summer, we're going to be spending several months in our favorite small town in America, Thermopolis, Wyoming. Um, we'll fill you in on why we're there if you subscribe to this channel and you get those updates of where we are and what we're doing. Um, we'll fill you in on that. But basically, um, we don't make enough money traveling uh, with our business as we are spending. Even though we're only spending $2,000 a month, we're still coming up short. So every now and then, right now, we have to stop and refill the coffers. So we will continue this budget even when we're stationary in Wyoming starting in May, June-ish. Uh, we'll also keep the summary updated so you can see how much we're spending. Counting the fuel, not counting the fuel, our total expenses. And I'm working on a spreadsheet or a tab where we're going to be showing you how much money we're making and the different ways that we're making money if you're interested in how you can make money traveling on the road the way that we are doing it. Now that we've talked about how we stay under $2,000, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up by saying leave us questions or comments in the section below about how you stay under a certain budget or if you have any questions on how we address certain issues that you may come across. So hopefully this video has helped you understand our personal life expenses on the road and how we manage to stay under $2,000. Hopefully it'll help you set a budget for yourself and so it gives you an example of what you may or may not be able to do on your own expenses. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks on RVing, as well as to go back and see all the places we've been and to go forward and see the places where we're going. We've got a lot of exciting things happening this year. Things are picking for, up for us with our business and the opportunities that we have to travel in our RV and we love to share the stories particularly of the people we meet and things that we do as we travel. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a positive comment, or if you have a question, we'd love to address your questions. We respond to every comment and question, so please make sure to do that or send us an email if there's something specific that we can help you out with. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. We'll see you out on the road.